Hey guys, here is a video showing my uh, new 3-axis handheld brushless uh, gimbal. Uh, very similar to the Movi M5 and M10. This is, this is one of the cheaper kind of do-it-yourself kits. Um, you can see here I have the follow mode set up on here. It's kind of more a uh, sensitive follow mode that I have programmed, so it's really sensitive around center. You can see here it's kind of, kind of like that uh, shoulder rig setup where you can quickly look right, left, you know look up and down like this, so down, up. Um, you can also change it where the button right here changes the different modes. So now I have this heading, so the camera's gonna be facing wherever I point it, and you can see it stays nice and level. So, I mean, I can do all of this all day long, and the camera's gonna stay there. Um, I can also control it with a joystick, you can see here. So that's very neat. And you can actually get a uh, second operator by using a separate RC transmitter. And now you can have like a you know monitor set up somewhere with the uh, the video uh, feed, and the guy can actually sit down in his chair, look into the monitor, and controlling where the gimbal is gonna go. So yeah, you know it's very very nice. A lot of time fine tuning one of this. So be prepared to spend a lot of frustrating nights you know, fine-tuning it and getting your gimbal to work because it's not going to work out of the box. So be prepared. <laughs> Once again, show you guys the follow mode. So you can see this is more of a soft follow mode that I have programmed for two clicks. So you can see it's really soft around center. It's going to be good if you're running around following something because, you know, most of the time you're running around, you're moving it, and you don't want the camera to constantly move kind of right, left, like that. So, I mean, you can see very, very nice. You can run around and you can still control if you want to look down at somebody's legs or somebody's face, you can do that. So it's very, very cool. I mean, very nice. I mean, when I saw the movie at M uh, NAB, I loved the technology, I loved the idea, but I, unfortunately, I'm not one of those guys that can afford to spend that type of money on a movie. So that's why I built my own and pretty fun process. Now, uh, this gimbal that you see here in front of me actually didn't did not start out this way. I started with a very cheap uh, gimbal, thinking I can get it to work and, you know, get nice shots. But like the saying is, you know, when you go cheap, you get what you pay for. Uh, the motors had a bad design. Actually, it's the same motors, but the way the gimbal was attached to the motor and how everything was being supported, the motors took all of the weight. And when you're walking, kind of running, the whole thing starts to bounce and the footage is no longer smooth. So I ended up modifying and upgrading a lot of the parts on here. So I mean, I'm still using the same tubes and some of the same 90 degree brackets right here, but these motor cages and, you know, camera mount accessories, this whole piece right here is all upgrade. So starting with the pan, I'm using this the pan motor with a cage system. The cage system has a larger 20 millimeter uh, inner diameter motor or, or actually support bearing. So at that larger bearing takes the load away from the motor itself so you eliminate a lot of slop and the motor lasts a lot longer they run cooler and you don't you know prematurely wear out the the motors same thing for the pan uh, the roll right here the axis same cage system same larger uh, 20 millimeter bearing and also have the cage system for the tilt uh, motor right here uh, battery setup I'm using is a four cell 2200 uh, lithium you know type of uh, battery got a monitor mount, I got a handle on top, uh, you know, homemade uh, joystick right here. Show you guys my joystick. Uh, yeah, these type of gimbals need some kind of stand because when you put it down, it doesn't really, you know, stay balanced because it's uh, kind of like a steady cam setup, like electronic steady cam. <laughs> so you can easily make a joystick yourself. I got this from uh, my local electronic, you know, store, Radio Shack. Uh, I got the project box, I got the monetary push button. You can go fancy with the push button, get a bigger size or even one with a, uh, a feedback. So when you hit it, it kind of clicks so you know you're going to that menu. But you know, it's got a very simple, basic, you know, push button type. Um, I have a two axis analog joystick. Uh, you know, you just got to do a lot of search on there, learn how to set it up. But it's actually very easy once you know how to solder some electronics. I'm using, you know, a hacked up USB cable with some headphone wires or the, the controls all the way down to the three axis uh, Alex Moss, you know, brushless controller board. So right here is the third axis with the heat sink on here and also have 
Inside here is the two axis uh, board, which is hidden behind this covering plate, so everything's all well protected. I have a heavy duty uh, on and off switch right here, so when I plug in my battery, the gimbal doesn't power on right away, so I can tell it when to power on when I'm ready. So it's very nice, very convenient uh, to do. Um, you can see here I got the wires coming around. So I mean, down here is the IMU or the the main sensor that tells that you know that tells the board exactly where the camera is looking at. So it knows what. Uh, degree or what orientation a camera is so that, you know that's kind of like the heart of uh, the whole controller um, I have just a basic Canon t 2 on here but this gimbal can actually handle up to a red but I wouldn't really recommend uh, putting a red on a gimbal this size just because it's not uh, built for a red but I can mount a red on here if I wanted to but once again I wouldn't really recommend it but you can put a 5D on here, with, you know, fully rigged out with the big prime lens and stuff like that, whatever you want to do. But it will support a uh, full-size DSLR. Currently, I just have a mini, you know, or a smaller, lightweight DSLR on here. Heavy-duty, 4mm thick uh, cages for the tilt. So, I mean, you can see a lot of adjustments you can do. So, I can, I can even flip this one over and put a red on here if I have to. But you can put, a, you know, optional mic on here, whatever you want to do. A lot of adjustments. A lot of room to grow with. I have uh, quick adjustments, uh, camera things, so I can easily slide it and take it on and off. Um, you know, cages for the tilt motor once again, monitor mount for any type of monitor set, like a small HD. I mean, that's pretty much covers it. You know, it's nothing too fancy. It's not going to be you know like a very fancy movie, but I can't afford it, so that's why I built my own. Just want to show you guys my handheld three axis. You know. Uh, stabilizer. I mean, for what it does, it works very well. Just be prepared to spend a lot of time learning how to properly balance all three axes as it could get a little bit tricky. So watch a lot of videos on YouTube and you probably will get a better understanding of how to properly balance it out because it's very picky. If you don't balance these things near perfect, you will get very bad results. So it's very important to balance it all. And one tip is if you guys are going to use one of these, try to stick with one lens because when you change lens, the balancing of everything throws off. So be prepared unless you want to you know, spend a lot of time rebalancing everything because when you change lens, add on a uh, you know, optional mic, add on a uh, streaming, like a video, HD video streaming system, you will have to rebalance everything all over again. So be prepared, I already warned you. <laughs> but yeah, that's a quick video showing my handheld versus uh, controller. If you guys are interested or have any questions, you know, leave in the comment box below or just send me a message and I'll try my best to reply and get back to you guys. Now, to be honest, I do lack in uh, replying back to some responses. So, yeah, I've been very busy lately. I haven't had a lot of free time to actually go on uh, YouTube because I just, you know, sh basically shoot videos, upload it from my phone, and that's pretty much it. So, I don't really have too much time to go online and reply back to everybody so sorry if I don't get a chance to reply back you know just been very very busy lately um, also stay tuned if you guys are interested I have some new phantom uh, upgrade parts if you guys are still having your phantom and you guys you know still want to do some aerial photographies I have some pretty cool new parts from T Motor so it's gonna be worth checking out my uh, future videos so yeah hope you guys enjoyed it once again and as always thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for the next videos that I'll be posting up rather pretty soon. So yeah, 